Wow, that's tiny is something no man ever wants to hear. Unless, of course, you're talking about the ANSIA TV wire controller wired gaming system. That's right, it's a whole gaming system in this tiny form factor. Pretty exciting. I picked this one up on Amazon just kind of randomly. It showed up as a suggested item. I had never seen anything like it before. And I thought, yeah, I gotta show everybody this guy. So let's start looking at it with the box. This, my friends, is the front of the box. ANSIA TV wire controller. It's the best choice. Here is the right side of the box. Features D-pad up, down, left, right, 45 degree angle, six functional buttons, A, B, select, start. Special function, menu button. TA button is the accelerate function of A button. Press TA button, the button of function. <laughs> Will running fire. TB button is the accelerate function of B button. Press TB button, the button B. Will <laughs> function will running fire. Wow. Here's the left side of the box. Looks like there's some games on it. Made in China. Here is the top of the box. For use with plug and play console. Controller. Um, this is the game system. So this is kind of confusing packaging. Here's the bottom of the box. Boo. The back of the box is just a whole bunch of pictures of games that we expect to see within this game system. Can't wait. Let's open this bad boy up. Booyah. Let's take a look what's inside here. I'm not expecting too much to be in here because of the cost. All right. Game system and it does appear to have a manual. <laughs> it's an instruction sheet. All right, let's take a look at the manual. Well, instruction sheet. TV wire controller instruction. Thanks for buying this beautiful and elegant TV game console. Hey, that's some good English there. Plug and play. LED indicates power on off. Power source. USB DC 5 volt. So you'll need your uh, phone charger to get this thing working. Unless your television has a USB port. Yellow cable for video output. White cable for audio output. Product image. Oop, there we go. And there it is. And a picture of the cables. And there's a user guide. We don't need that. The back is blank. Oh, the excitement. And there it is. The plug and play TV game console. Huh. The D-pad does not appear to have collapse syndrome. I don't think so, no. The plastics feel competent. The buttons are not bad. The start, select, and menu buttons are all rubberized, which I really, really like. Huh, better construction quality than I was expecting. Let's look at the cable. The cables are made out of pretty decent, not cheap materials. The plastics are good on these cables and they're fairly thick. Also, if you look at the heads of the RCA jacks, they're pretty decent too. They're not thin or cheap. USB looks like it's not gonna fall apart. Uh, there's probably not enough separation between these for me. It might be hard on some televisions because the USB port might be further away from the AV ports than you'd like, but look at this. It goes into a protective cover so that you don't accidentally keep tearing these away from each other. I'll be darned. That's really nice. Well, let's plug it in and play it. Retro Rock plays everything. All right, here we are at the main menu. We've got 200 games in here. They appear to all be hacks by my experience. Some of these I do recognize, some of them I don't. Uh, we'll be trying about five games in the list. I've played Toy Factory before. 
Uh, looks like there's a lot of puzzle games on here and that kind of thing. I did check out a couple of the racing games already and they appear to be about the same thing that you see in all of these. Uh, nothing like super amazing on these, but the games are generally passable if you're giving it to like a little kid or something. Or maybe you're just looking for something to do when you're super bored. Fruit Dish sounds like a real winner. Hexapod War, I think we've run into that before too. Mad uh, Christmas, we've seen before. Uh, Polar Bat is another one that's popular for these kinds of things. So it's basically got the same set of games plus maybe a couple extra hack games uh, that we see in pretty much all these systems. All right, let's try a few. All right, here we have F22, which is a very basic shooter. However, it's not a bad shooter. It's not great. I mean, we're definitely not gonna win any awards here with this game. However, the controls work really well on it, and that is due to the fact that this is actually a competent controller. In fact, it's much better uh, than some of the fake NES controllers I've seen made for the PC. Uh, but also, the hit detection on this game is good. It's, again, nothing special. It's not awesome. I think there's not enough uh, not enough frequency with the pickups to keep you super interested. But for a kid, this might not be bad. And it's not going to make them cry because it's actually fairly decent. Hmm, not bad. All right, so who fancies a little blackjack? Yes, there is a plethora of card games here and the basics are all represented. Things like poker are here and of course uh, blackjack. So I'm gonna just play a quick round. Uh, 14, I'm gonna hit on that. And I busted, bummer. Let's try one more. Bet and deal. So I got a 17 or a seven. Uh, generally, you should stand on 16. I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna follow the rules and see what happens. And I won, all right. Let's try another game. One real quick thing I wanna note is that if you hit the menu button and go back to the menu, it will resume where you left off. That's really nice if you're just kind of playing through casually and don't wanna lose your place as far as checking out games. It's really nice, not bad. And this is Jump Jump the official game of Criss Cross. If you know who Criss Cross is, <laughs> you feel free to fill everybody else in uh, in the comments down below, 90s child. Uh, this is a very basic game. It's not super enjoyable or anything. It's very reminiscent of many of the games on here, but it is well implemented as far as the controls work really well, again, due to the really pretty darn good controller this thing has. I have a lot of control. It's good stuff, but not great. There we go, yay. Here's a game I'm throwing in as a bonus. It's called Dark Castle. I have no idea how to play it. I don't get it at all. Uh, you do try to avoid that dragon, but I'm really not sure what's going on here. Anybody played this game? Let me know the rules. It looks kind of neat, but I don't get it. And here we have Javelin Throw, which we've seen on many other game systems, but I am, for the sake of letting you know that these games are on here, showing you it. Uh, this, of course, is like part of an Olympic or whatever decathlon style game uh, but it's been split up, so it seems like it's more than one game. There's like eight of these on here, and they're all different things like discus or just running. It's not bad. The games are fun to play themselves, but unfortunately they become pointless because the scoring is all messed up by the fact that uh, you only get to play one of the games in any given instance here. This is X Racer, which is probably one of the slowest racing games I've ever, ever played. However, it does have one thing going for it, which is the fact that you can tell what place you're in. Take a look. I'm in 87. That makes it much better 
than many of the racing games that are similar to this that are on other devices, which don't tell you anything at all. So at least there's a point to it, huh? But if you really want to try a racing game that's a little bit better, try this one. Racing Fighter, which is not really the greatest thing ever, but you can shoot stuff, which makes it fun. Not a lot of fun, but a bit of fun. At least there's some kind of challenge. Oh, I'm out of ammo. Crap. All right, for our last game, we're gonna do Man in Red, which is kind of an infamous game in Famiclone circles. It's not the uh, not the greatest game in the world, but you know, uh, you're shooting some UFOs with your dude. And does it get much better than that? Yes, yes, it does get better than that, but not this game. Let's play. <laughs> oh my. Come on. Level three. Well, it's getting real now. Yeah, much faster. But really, really kind of boring. Let's wrap this up. All right, so the verdict on the ANSEA plug and play game system. Well, if you're looking for something for little kids, this will probably work pretty well for you. Uh, the control is really quite durable. It doesn't use any batteries, so you don't have to worry about them maybe swallowing a battery or anything. It has a long enough cord to play with. Phrasing. It's really not bad. Yeah, the games are super basic, but for kids that's not necessarily a bad thing. So. For its intended purpose, I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. It's really one of the better ones of this kind of game system I've played with. Not bad. All right, thank you very much for watching this. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more. And I will see you in a couple days. Bye.